I just went to the Upside Down for a -a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Not that one. But like the other one, Australia is trying to kill me. Thankfully, I've known about this trip for a while, so I've been learning the language by watching I Did a Thing. How ya going? How ya going? After flying across the planet with a baby and a four-year-old, everyone was nice and relaxed, which was good because the customs video was pretty intense. Something along the lines of, no bringing food into the country or there'd be a fine, if you had mud on your shoes, you'd be imprisoned, and if you had ever once thought about dairy, you'd be killed on the spot. Something like that. Thankfully, the airplane did some extra laps to make sure we had plenty of time for the anxiety to set in. As it turns out, the people in customs were nice, which made me realize that they were just trying to cull the weak with the video. Only the strong could survive Australia. Braced, we headed to our first stop and walked up the world's steepest, longest staircase with our four suitcases, three backpacks, double stroller, and children. But at least it turned out that that was the wrong direction. But finally, we arrived at beautiful Kuji Beach, which was riddled with these guys. A quick image search showed that these were Portuguese man of war, which has an excruciatingly painful and sometimes even deadly sting, even if they're dead. Thankfully, we asked the local, and they assured us it was only a blue bottle jellyfish. Hmm. It was becoming clear I just wasn't prepared for the down under. Everything was topsy turvy. The toilets didn't even flush the wrong way. It just kind of consumed the water. I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in a toilet. It was evident I needed a guide, an expert on the region who could be with me at all times. If only past me had made exactly that, like one of these, this thing here. But its main purpose was much more valuable than just something to make me not die. It's to act as a tour guide wherever I am without having to pay someone. It iterates on the setup I used for my smart home. I'm a fire alarm! For this, when I say, Butler, give me a tour, it gets my precise coordinates and uses AI to generate a thorough tour for that location. Realistically, we won't have Wi-Fi for most of the tours, so we're bringing back Blue's wireless. The biggest difference being that Australia is indeed not North America, so I'm upgrading to a global note card, which can be done by just unscrewing the old one and plugging the new global note card into my existing note carrier F. This allows us to make the calls we need to be able to generate the AI tours, and while we're at it, make the voice not this. Let's talk to the fruit so many attractions this magnificent destination offers. I can only listen to that for so long before my ears start bleeding, so we're using the OpenAI voice as well. If you head a little bit east, you will find Clifton Hill, a vibrant area filled with fun attractions and Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Continuing east, Of course, these tours are pretty thorough, so that's a lot of audio data to pass in. So I did a bunch of nerd science to come up with a good offline option. Hello, this is Coquets in action. This text to speech sounds pretty good, but takes absolutely forever to load. This is Kiko text to speech. It's also fast and sounds pretty good, all things considered. Guess we have a winner. Since the coordinates have to be super accurate or we'll get an incredibly useless tour of somewhere else, we use a simple blues call when we're not on Wi-Fi and the Google Geolocation API for when we're on Wi-Fi. And that's the gist. For all you code nerds, I'll have a project write up and for everyone else, hey look, now we're in Sydney. There was a lot of good stuff to see, so having a tour guide in my pocket was pretty sweet. But there were definitely some flaws. Butler, give me a tour. I should have made a carrying case for this. Thankfully, it turned out that I wasn't the only one wearing bulky headphones around. But just imagine having to awkwardly say, Butler, give me a tour, in front of the Sydney Opera House. I don't have to imagine, and boy was it awkward. So, when I got back home, I added the option to start a tour when you press one of the buttons. Much less awkward. Welcome to Sydney, Australia. Sydney is home to the world's largest natural harbor, with over 240 kilometers of shoreline dotted with hidden beaches and secluded coves. The Sydney Opera House, though iconic today, faced massive public criticism during its 15-year construction and almost bankrupted the government. Just below the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you can still find remnants of the original colonial settlement at the Rocks, where sandstone buildings and underground tunnels tell the story of Australia's convict past. Nearby, The Royal Botanic Garden stretches across 30 hectares, offering a serene escape with over 7,500 species of plants, including a rare Wollemi pine, 
a dinosaur tree once thought extinct. The garden also houses Mrs. Macquarie's chair, a sandstone bench carved in 1810, providing one of the best vantage points to view Sydney Harbour. The harbour is teeming with marine life, and dolphins are frequently spotted swimming beneath the ferries. Whether you're exploring its historic roots, marveling at its architectural wonders, or simply soaking up the natural beauty, Sydney offers something for everyone. This city truly captures the essence of Australia. Enjoy your time in Sydney, where every corner has a story to tell and an adventure to offer. As it turns out, Australia is a really cool place, and the people there were just as confused about life down under as we were. The vacation was great, and I did indeed survive the upside down. Well, sort of. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you also enjoyed this really cool accent I picked up called Being Sick Forever. Catch you on the next one, and hopefully I won't sound like this.